I'm going to be talking about the interestingly named Apotheosis of Washington, an 1865 fresco by Constantino Brumidi that adorns the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol Building in Washington, D.C. Because it's painted on the underside of a dome, the fresco takes the shape of two tiers of scenes. On the upper ring, we can see Washington, flanked on one side by the Goddess of Liberty and on the other by the Goddess of Fame, sitting with his blanket over himself. They are surrounded by 13 personifications of the original 13 colonies. Brumidi is evidently not a fan of subtlety. Two of the states carry across the Latin motto of the United States, E Pluribus Unum, which means from many, one. The classical influence on the upper ring is very obvious. The idea of giving personifications to states is a very Roman thing to do, and furthermore they're all dressed in classical garb, with the exception of Washington. Now moving on to the bottom ring, we can see that it consists of six scenes which represent the work of the American people. Directly below Washington is War, which sees freedom trampling on an ermine coat, the little black and white thing that is a symbol of kingly power. Now following this we have the goddess Minerva presiding over this science scene. Uh, the machine right there is apparently an electrical generator. And now we come to the marine scene, which has Neptune and Venus spreading the transatlantic cable across the ocean. Behind them is an ironclad, a new type of warship that has just come into use during the very recent civil war. The next scene is commerce, in which the Roman god Mercury seems to oversee some business transactions. That guy in the suit he's handing the pile of gold to is Roger Morris, the financier of the Revolutionary War. The industry and mechanic scene features the Roman god Vulcan watching over the forging of cannons and shop, as well as the building of a building, it seems. The agriculture scene features yet another Roman goddess. This time it's the Roman goddess of agriculture, Ceres. Together with the personification of America, she's riding McCormick Reaper and having a bountiful harvest. Now the first thing I notice when looking at these scenes is how anachronistic they seem. In one scene, we have a battleship that's from contemporary period, from the 1860s, but in another, we have freedom wearing medieval armor. And neither of those things are from Washington's time, and that isn't even mentioning the presence of classical deities right alongside them. This tells me that these scenes are more about the technological, industrial, and agricultural achievements of the United States rather than George Washington himself. He's only there to serve as a sort of father figure to all of that. After all, at the time that this was painted, George Washington had been dead for a long time. It was 1865. The idealized version of him that had arisen after his death had become a sort of American legend. And I think that's really what we're seeing here. No one in 1865 America is actually worshipping Roman deities, and yet they appear here anyway to reference the classical age, and to show that the United States can be just as glorious as those classical civilizations. Now, to modernize, this all looks a bit silly. Uh, we're not very comfortable with making our political leaders analogous to gods or emperors and showing them ascending into heaven. At times, it can seem even a little self-indulgent, what with the eagle and the rainbow and the big shield and whatnot. Even so, I could admire the amount of stuff behind this painting. Not only are there classical elements everywhere, which is fitting because all the subject matter is overtly neoclassical, but at the same time, the entire thing looks like a Renaissance fresco you might find in a monastery somewhere. Basically, the entire thing is surprising and interesting to look at. And sometimes, that's more important than raw aesthetic beauty. Thanks for watching.